Hello friends, welcome back to Learn Engineering with Meera. Today we will solve another problem on roof truss. We will find out all the forces acting on members of truss using method of joints. So keep watching till the end. This is exterior view of a typical residential building. Here mono roof truss that is truss which is sloped in one direction only is used as part of the roofing system and we want to find out forces acting on all the joints of this truss by method of joints for reference let's give the joints some name suppose length of these members is 1 meter and external load of 10 kN is acting on joints D and F. Also, this angle is 30 degree. So, let's begin. The first step in this method is to find out support reactions. Here at joint A, there is a hinge support. So, there will be two reactions. RA in vertical direction and HA in horizontal direction. At joint G, truss is simply supported on wall, so there will be only one reaction RG. Before we begin, let's remember the sign conventions we are going to use. Upward force will have a positive sign and force acting in downward direction will have a negative sign. Similarly, anti-clockwise moment will be positive while clockwise moment will be negative. Now consider the free body diagram of the truss as a whole. For this, consider only the external forces and reactions and ignore the forces acting on members. Now there are three equilibrium equations available to find out reactions. First equation is summation of all horizontal forces is zero. So, HA is equals to 0 because there is no other horizontal force acting on the truss. Now, sigma FV is equals to 0. Forces in upward direction will be positive. So, RA plus RG and external forces acting on joints D and F will be negative. So, minus 20 is equals to 0. We don't know the value of RA or RG yet. So, move to the next condition that is sigma ma is equals to 0. We know that moment is force multiplied by distance. Suppose joint A is fixed and only RG is applied. It will rotate the truss in anti-clockwise direction. So, we will have a positive sign. Distance of RG from joint A is 3 meter. So, Rg into 3. But if only 10 kN force is acting at F, truss will rotate in clockwise direction. So, it will have negative sign and its distance from A is 2 meter. Similarly, for 10 kN force at D, have negative sign with distance of 1 meter and summation of all these moments is equals to 0. So we get Rg equals to 10 kN. Put this value in above equation and we get Ra is equals to 10 kN too. To find out forces on joints, we will consider all the members as well as the internal forces acting in members. 
so next step is to assume the directions of forces either tension or compression at each joint wherever a member is connected let's assume that all the forces are tensile in nature next step is to find magnitude of forces at one of the joints to find out the forces acting on individual joints we will use the equilibrium equations again but here for one particular joint all the forces are meeting at a point and thus there is no point of considering the equation sigma m is equals to 0 so there are only two equilibrium equations now first of all select a joint where only two unknown forces are acting here at joints b and g there are only two unknown forces all other joints have three or more unknown forces so let's start with joint g first we have to find out the angles all the inclined members at joint make with x or y axis for joint g gf is the inclined member and it is given that it makes 30 degree angle with x axis you can name the unknown forces like fgf fge etc nearest joint g first and then joint at other end of member now drag 10 kN force along y axis so that tails of all the forces meet at center components of force fgf would be fgf cos 30 along x axis and fgf sin 30 along y axis now sigma fh is equals to 0 so fge plus fgf cos 30 is equals to 0 as both forces are in same direction we don't know any of the values yet so let's solve second equation sigma fv is equals to 0 so fgf sin 30 plus 10 is equals to 0 thus fgf is equals to minus 20 kilo newton put this value in above equation and we get fge is equals to 17.32 kilo newton If the answer is positive, the assumed direction of force is correct. Otherwise, the opposite direction should be selected. So, FGE is a tensile force, but FGF is a compressive one. But for convenience, right now we will keep the directions as it is. Next step is to repeat step 3 at all the remaining joints one by one. After calculating forces at joint G, we have two options, joint F and joint E. But both the joints have more than two unknown forces. Then which one is to select? So as we have already calculated FGF and FGE previously, Forces on other side of the member will be exactly equal but in opposite direction to maintain equilibrium. Now at joint E there are two unknown forces and at joint F there are three unknown forces. So begin with joint E. Let's name all the forces. Here there is no inclined member so no need to find out angles. Now sigma fh is equals to 0, so we get fec is equals to 17.32 kN and sigma fv is equals to 0, so fef is equals to 0. As we have calculated the unknown forces at E, the forces at other ends of members will also have same magnitude. So now the joint with only two unknown forces is joint F. Here joint F has three inclined members FD, FC and FG. So let's first of all find out angles they make with either X or Y axis. 
In right angle triangle FEG, this angle is 30 degree. So member FG makes 60 degree to Y axis. Now triangle FCG is symmetrical. So this angle will be 60 degree too. And as FD is in same line to FG, it also makes 60 degree angle to Y axis. Now drag 10 kN force in downward direction so that all the forces are meeting at center. Components of force FFD are FFD sin 60 and FFD cos 60 respectively along x axis and y axis. Similarly, these are the components of FFC and minus 20 kN forces. Now sigma FH is equals to 0. So we get this equation. Minus 20 kN has positive sign but other two forces are in opposite direction so have negative sign. Divide the whole equation by minus sin 60 and so 20 plus FFD plus FFC is equals to 0. We don't know any of the values yet so go to the next equation sigma FV is equals to 0 and we get this equation. Divide the whole equation by cos 60 and we get FFC is equals to FFD. Put this in above equation and we get FFC is equals to FFD is equals to minus 10 kN. As we calculated FFC and FFD, forces at other ends of members will also have same magnitude. And so now there are only two unknown forces FCD and FCA left at joint C. The only inclined member at joint C is CF and as this is symmetrical triangle this angle is 30 degree 2. So components of minus 10 kN force along x and y axis are minus 10 cos 30 and minus 10 sin 30 respectively. Now sigma FH is equals to 0. So minus 10 cos 30 plus 17.32 minus FCA is equals to 0. So we get FCA is equals to 8.66 kN. And sigma FV is equals to 0. So FCD minus 10 sin 30 is equals to 0. So FCD is equals to 5 kN. Again, as we have calculated FCD and FCA, forces at other ends of members will also have the same magnitude. And so now joint D and joint A both have two unknown forces left. Let's select joint A first. Here AD is the inclined member and let's say it makes theta angle to X axis. Here triangle ADG is not symmetrical so we'll have to calculate theta by some other method. Here length of member AC is given. So if we have the length of member CD we can use equation of 10 theta and find angle theta. So in triangle DCG 1030 is equals to CD divided by CG that is 2 meter. So we get CD is equals to 1.1547 meter. And so theta we get is 49.10 degree.
drag 10 kilo newton force in upward direction and write components of force FAD that is FAD cos theta and FAD sin theta. Now sigma f h is equals to 0 so we get this equation and put theta is equals to 49.10 degree we get FAD is equals to minus 13.23 kilo newton. Similarly sigma fv is equals to 0 so FAB is equals to 0. Again, the opposite ends of member will have same magnitude of forces. So let's select the next joint, joint D. Here only one force is left unknown. There are number of inclined members and different angles here. So please pay attention. The inclined members at joint D are DF, DA and DB. In right angle triangle DCG, this angle is 30 degree. So this angle will be 60 degree. And as DF and DB are in same line, both DF and DB make 60 degree angle to Y axis. Now only DA is left. As we have already calculated this angle theta, this makes Z shape and so DA makes theta angle to X axis. Now drag 10 kN force in downward direction. These are the components of all the inclined members. Now sigma FH is equals to 0. So we get this equation. Put all values and FDB is equals to 0. Now there is no other unknown force left. But if you want to check whether the solved numerical is correct or not, take sigma FV is equals to 0. So we get this equation. And after putting all the values, the answer must be equal to 0. Also, FDB is equals to 0. So, opposite force will be 0 too. And that's it. We have calculated forces in all the members of this truss. If you observe here, forces in both members at joint B are 0 as they are not collinear and there is no external force acting and so they are 0 force members. In last step, make a table showing name of members in first column, magnitude of forces and the direction that is tension or compression in last column. This is the list of all the members. Now member GF have magnitude of force minus 20 kN. Now as we have assumed that direction of all the forces is tension, negative value indicates compression. So simply remove the negative sign and write C for compression instead. Force in member GE is 17.32 kN which is positive so assume direction tension is correct similarly write down forces and directions for all the members